I'm reading from, from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot from Jesse's stump. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him and a spirit of wisdom and understanding. A spirit of planning and strength. A spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances, nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike in the violent with the rod of his mouth by the breath of his lips, and he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness, the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and a lion will eat a straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on the holy, my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations will seek him out, and his dwelling will be glorious. That is the word of God for the people of God. God. Will you pray with me? Holy Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather in this place to hear your word. And Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So there is just something about this time of year that for me brings with it a sense of nostalgia and a sense of longing. I long for something that is familiar and I long for just a little bit of the past to come into my present life. A few weeks ago, I shared with you that my family did something that we have never ever done before. We went and we bought our Christmas tree and we put it up and decorated it the weekend before Thanksgiving. Before this year, I've always held out saying, no, we will not be the type of family that goes out and puts up our Christmas tree before Thanksgiving. I wanted us to celebrate Thanksgiving, to be grateful before we moved on to celebrating Christmas. But in my defense, we have learned that just because we now live near a bunch of Christmas tree farms, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get the kind of tree that you want. As we know, people come from all over the state and neighboring states to find their Christmas tree right here in Haywood County. Every year when we decorate our Christmas tree, there are certain ornaments that I like to make sure that I'm the one to hang them up. Several years ago, my mom was cleaning out her collection of Christmas tree ornaments, which you can imagine after 30 plus years of marriage and four children, you have quite the collection of Christmas tree ornaments. And she wanted to share them with her daughters. So I received in the mail one year two shoe boxes full of ornaments from my family Christmas tree. Every year as we open up our boxes, I look for those ornaments, the ones that we hung on our tree when I was a child are the ones that old memories for me. They bring me back to a time that was easier, a time that was more simple, a time that quite frankly seemed better in my life. 
between the Christmas tree ornaments and other family traditions, I, it, it has become important to me to celebrate and to remember the past, to remember the memories that we made growing up, to remember gathering together with the people that I love and sharing stories with each other about the past. In the telling of those stories, there always is this sense of yearning, a sense of longing for the joy, the peace, the innocence of how things used to be. As a pastor, I've become somewhat seasoned in hearing stories from the past, in hearing stories of how things used to be. And in those stories, I always sense a yearning in the congregation about how things were. We want things to be the way that they used to be. And Pastors often commiserate with each other. We often say that the most dreaded words that we hear as a pastor are those words, we've always done it that way. I'm sure you've heard that before. But I've come to understand that those words, we've always done it that way, reflect an inner longing for a time when things just seemed easier more simple, and quite frankly, better. The Bible talks about a time and a place when things really were easier, more simple, and better. The book of Genesis refers to that place and that time as the Garden of Eden. It was a time shortly after creation when God had created the heavens and the earth. God created the beauty of the world, the land, the animals, and then God created Adam and Eve. And he called it all good. He placed Adam and Eve in that Garden of Eden, and while they were there, Adam and Eve enjoyed the company of each other and the company of God. They had no sense of guilt, no embarrassment. It was a time of peace. There was no anger, no hatred. There was no war. Even the animals lived in harmony with each other and with humanity. In the Garden of Eden, every single living creature seemed to understand that it played a role in creation. And there was a great sense of peace. But it didn't last long. In the third chapter of Genesis, we hear the story of Adam and Eve and the serpent, the story of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And by the end of that story, the world was a completely different place. By the end of the story, Adam and Eve were ashamed. There was a mistrust between them and a mistrust between humanity and animals. By the end of the story, Adam and Eve were taken out of the Garden of Eden and left to work the land, to toil, and to live in a time that was no longer filled with peace. The rest of our Bible is the story of God trying to restore that sense of peace, trying to restore a relationship with us of trust and harmony. 
And I believe that even though we have never experienced the Garden of Eden for ourselves, somewhere deep down inside of us, each and every one of us longs for that kind of experience. We long for a return to paradise, to a time that was simple, filled with peace and joy. The prophet Isaiah reflects that longing to return to Eden. We heard the words from chapter 11, starting with verse 6, where the prophet says, The wolf will lie down with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with a young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed feed together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze together. Their young will lie down together, and a lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea. The world that the prophet Isaiah describes is so drastically different from the world that we live in today. We all know that our world is not filled with peace. You would never see a lion and a goat lying down together. None of us would allow a baby to play with a den of snakes. This world seems to be almost an impossibility when you take a look around, when you see the division, the animosity, the anger. It's hard to believe that this kind of world that the prophet Isaiah describes could ever exist. It just seems to be so far away from what is real. But according to the prophet, this world will happen. It will become a reality. It'll happen when a shoot grows from the stump of the chopped down tree that represented King David. The prophet says a new branch will appear from the roots of that stump and it will be the beginning of something completely new and completely different. The prophet Isaiah lived during a time when it was clear that the peace, the prosperity, and the utopia that existed with the rule of King David was long gone. The once unified country of Israel had split into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. They fought against each other. Brother fought against brother. There were great threats from the other empires around Israel. Assyria had already invaded and decimated the northern kingdom of Israel And it was not long before they invaded the southern kingdom as well. The holy city of Jerusalem laid in ruins, and the temple of God was destroyed. There seemed to be no future for the lineage of David, and doom had come to them because, according to the prophet, They had deprived the needy of their rights. They had robbed the poor of justice. They had stolen from the widows and from the orphans. This once prosperous kingdom of David, represented by a tree, would be cut down, and all that was left was a stump. There were no more branches. No more leaves, no more fruit. 
there was just a stump. And yet, there's great hope in the prophet Isaiah. A shoot, a branch will grow from the stump and the roots of Jesse. There will be a new king who will rule with the spirit of God upon him, who will delight in the Lord, who will clothe himself with righteousness and faithfulness. He will have the spirit of wisdom, of planning and strength, the spirit of knowledge. To Isaiah... This would be a king who would reunite the people, who will bring the people out of exile, who will bring about a reunified kingdom of Israel that would be even better than the old kingdom. To those who paid attention hundreds of years later, this branch out of the stump of Jesse was Jesus Christ. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was filled with wisdom, with knowledge, with righteousness and faithfulness. Jesus was the one to bring about a completely new kind of world, a world that began to to represent the world that Isaiah talked about. A world that was different. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was filled with this wisdom, with this knowledge, with righteousness. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus broke down the barriers of hatred that divide us from each other. The Apostle Paul writes about how Jesus broke down those barriers of gender, of race, of ethnicity. And through Jesus Christ, there can be peace. During this season of Advent, we celebrate that Jesus came into the world. We celebrate that through the birth of the baby, there began a time when when the new heaven and a new earth were being formed. A time of great transformation. But we also recognize that this time is not fully lived out yet. And we look forward to a time when Jesus will come again, when Jesus will usher in his kingdom in its fullness, when there will be a time of full peace, a time when the lion and the goat will feed together and a little child will lead them. You know, a lot of people, myself included, we really look forward to that time. We look forward to a time when there won't be as much division and hatred and anger. We look forward to a time when we can live together in peace and reconciliation. We look forward to a time when the entire earth will be filled with the knowledge of God. But we're not there yet. And I think in the meantime, we are called to be a signal to the world. Isaiah says that the root of Jesse will stand as a signal to the people. That the nations will seek him out. As followers of Jesus Christ, I think we are called to be that light. 
We are called to be a signal towards God. In the book of Romans, Paul said that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. Advent reminds me that while we are in this in-between time, we are called to tap into that Holy Spirit. We are called to allow the Spirit to transform us, to transform our relationships. And through that, we will transform the world. I invite you to join me during this season of Advent in praying that the Spirit would come upon us that we would tap into that power of transformation, that we would be agents of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, in this time in our world, We look around us and we see great division. We see anger. But Lord, you call us to be different. You call us to be people who long and yearn for a time of a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth. Help us, Lord, to tap into your Holy Spirit to stand as a signal that the way the world is now is not the way it has to be. Transform us so that we, through your Holy Spirit, can help transform the world. Amen.